Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello, everyone. How are you? This is Carl Sussman, host of Insurance Hour. Thanks for joining me. Remember, you can catch us on awesome stations all across California, just to name a few, KEIB Los Angeles, KFBK Sacramento, KTRB San Francisco, KCBQ San Diego, KCAA Riverside, KMET Inland Empire, KZSB in Santa Barbara, and of course, you can always find us on your favorite podcast and YouTube. We have got a full show today, lots to talk about. Remember, you can call in at 559-656-0317. Love to take your questions, and you can always send an email to questions at insurancehour.com. So with all of that fun, we have got so much to go over. Let's just jump right in. You might have noticed that there have been some insurance companies that have been changing how they do business or whether they do business. And I thought that it makes sense for us to just talk about those to get off the right off the bat. Uh, you probably have heard about State Farm. It's a relatively large company. They are actually the largest by percentage market share company that writes property insurance in California. Now, they have made an announcement that they are non-renewing 72,000 policies. Of those, about half are homeowners insurance, meaning people that own single family homes, things like that. The other half is roughly what they call small habitational and commercial. They might be duplexes, triplexes, small uh, apartment buildings, things like that. So we've got a large group of people, 72,000 people that are going to be receiving non-renewal notices in what I could say very politically correctly in the least, uh, the, the worst time, I suppose, because right now, if you've tried to get a proposal for homeowners insurance, you've probably noticed there are not a lot of options out there. So we've got about 30, about 72,000 people that are going to be searching for insurance. And then right on the heels of that, uh, the company called American National Group not only is going to be non-renewing another 38,000 policies in California, and those are all homeowners insurance policies. They're actually leaving the business altogether in five states. So we're seeing, again, this major contraction from the insurance industry that is creating an environment where there is not only lack of new availability for insurance policies, but we're having people that need them because some carriers are actually leaving the business altogether. Now, speaking of leaving the business also, and we're probably only going back a short time, CSE Insurance has stopped writing and is going out of the business as well. They're not just leaving California, they're wiping their hands of the entire business and they're saying, we cannot make money in the insurance business, we're gone. Similar with Kemper Insurance. This is something that's been ongoing over the last few months. Now, keep in mind, and I don't have to tell you if you're in this situation, that again, the timing of this is really harsh because when you have a vacuum created by companies leaving and by non-renewals going out, it puts more pressure on the remaining companies to write that business. Well, the problem is those companies are under the same financial constraints, the same pressure that every carrier that's leaving is under. So they're not in a position to be able to take on those additional risks. So what are people doing? Well, that takes us to what's called the insurer of last resort, the California Fair Plan Association. Now, unfortunately, the California Fair Plan Association, which in case you're wondering, everyone ever wonder, what does the FAIR stand for? F-A-I-R? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Well, it stands for Fair Access to Insurance Requirements, meaning that you have to be able to have access to the requirement of insurance. So it was originally put together as a response to the Watts riots in the late 60s. And that was because there were areas that insurance carriers were not writing. So they created a sort of conglomerate, the California Fair Plan, where all of the admitted companies in California were going to be paying money into something like a pool. They would collect premium. They would pay the claims. So the fair plan is not an insurance company per se, and it's a not it's not making profit. It it's supposed to be zeroed out at the end of every year, right? The premiums they collect should be sufficient to pay the claims. If they're not, then the insurance carriers in California all have to chip in based on their percentage of market share and pay those claims. 
So that's why Fair Plan was originally put into place. What we're seeing now is because there's such a shortage, because there are so many carriers that are not offering new policies, people are having no choice but to go to the California Fair Plan to get coverage. The first concern about that, of course, is that the Fair Plan was not designed for that, financially or structurally. Not to mention the fact that the policy they offer is not NOT, highlight, italicize, boldface. It is not a homeowner's insurance policy. It is a fire insurance policy, period. Fire insurance, that is all. There is no liability. There is no theft. There is no damage by water. Fire, 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 fire. That is all. Now, again, because the fair plan was put together and the general idea was this is going to be where you go when you absolutely cannot get coverage anywhere else, the thought behind that was you would have tried lots of other places. The thought was that you would have tried other places and be refused, so you would go to the fair plan. So when you're going somewhere because there's no other option, would you expect the price to be high or low? Well, the answer is high because they're writing high risk exposures, the exposures that nobody else wants to write. So the fair plan prices are very high and that's by design because their losses are very high. Remember, they're not making any profit. They are literally collecting premium to be able to pay claims. So that was the initial design. But now that we have so many people that are rushing to fair plan because they literally are going to all of the other carriers that are in California to write coverage and they're being turned down for one reason or another, either that carrier is already at capacity in that area, meaning they already have too much exposure in a particular area, or they're not priced properly, or there's underwriting considerations, whatever the case may be, people are running to fair plan because the other markets are not offering coverage. What that's doing is putting a strain on the fair plan that would blow your mind. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to tell you just how in the red the California Fair Plan is, just how much are they behind in the premium they're collecting versus the ability to pay claims and the exposure that they have. It's pretty frightening to be honest. And we'll also talk about how we're going to get out of this situation and be able to get the insurance industry back into a competitive, vibrant marketplace where you will actually be able to go from company to company and shop around and try and find the best product or try and find the best price. Let's talk about all of that as soon as we come back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this, something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. We are back. Thanks for being here. Once again, I am Carl Sussman, host of Insurance Hour. Remember, you can find us here and on great stations all across California. We are now syndicated from everywhere from Los Angeles, Sacramento, San Diego, Riverside, Santa Barbara, you name it, we are there. We are covering a little over 30 million people, or it sounds even better to say 60 million ears. Well, maybe that's an exaggeration because you never know. Let's just stick with 30 million people because that is the statistic that we have. Now, before the break, we were talking about the California Fair Plan and the insurance market in general. So what I want to do is give you some background that I've already alluded to. If we know that the California Fair Plan is designed to be there as a last resort, and we understand that they're there basically to just be to zero out, to not have profit. So what happens when all of a sudden there's a major onslaught of new clients coming in that were not expected, that were not accounted for? 
Well, what that means is they're going to have numbers coming in and exposures on their books, it's called, meaning they're going to have exposure, the dollars of exposure and risk that they actually have that are going to be much higher than we're predicted for. Let me put some color in that for you. We're looking right now at the California Fair Plan having somewhere around $320 billion in total exposure. That's billion with a B, okay? That means that if you take all of the insurance policies that they have in place, all of the amount of coverage for each of those insurance policies, and you mash them all together, that's what you're looking at as a number. Now, how much do they have sitting in the bank right now, right? Because remember, we talked about this. We said that they're just supposed to have enough premium coming in to be able to pay for expected claims. Right now, because of this onslaught, they only have somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to $150 million in the bank. Yeah, millions, billions, tens, hundred millions to several hundred thousands of billions. Big difference. So you might all of a sudden be thinking, okay, so there's no way the California Fair Plan will be able to pay their claims if there's a large event. Well, you're right and you're wrong. This is what happens. And at a recent hearing in Sacramento, uh, in front of the state assembly, I actually went and gave comment as well. The president of the California Fair Plan explained that we are one major catastrophe away from a surcharge. And what that means, that's actually almost a quote. I think I've said it enough times. What that actually means is in the event that there's a large wildfire event, a large wildfire event, based on the amount of money that the California Fair Plan has in their coffers versus what that potential claim could look like. A surcharge would have to be made. Now you might think that's a surcharge to you and it's not exactly yet. What that means is all of the carriers in California would get a bill and the bill would be based on what their market share of business is in the state of California. What does that mean? It means that Carriers like State Farm and Allstate and Farmers and Travelers and Mercury and Safeco and and you name it, all of the carriers that you know and love, they would get a bill to have to pay for those claims because the California Fair Plan does not have enough money. So the Fair Plan, while it is on the balance sheet quite insolvent, I mean, there's nowhere near enough money to pay claims because the way the Fair Plan charter works, because of the way the organization was designed, the money can be backed by all of this, all of the admitted carriers, you would have to bankrupt all of the admitted carriers in California combined before you would truly be out of money. So the, sur- the, the surcharge would be to the insurance carriers having to pay that bill. Now that might to you sound like, okay, let the insurance companies pay that, pay that bill for that loss. Well, where do you think that's going to lead? If an insurance carrier, again, these are not nonprofits, they're not public utilities, they're they're private companies that, that need to make money to stay in business, are getting surcharged, what do you think that's going to inevitably do to our premiums as consumers? Doesn't take long, you don't have to think too hard, don't hurt yourself. You're going to end up seeing your premiums impacted by that. So what we are, where we are right now is we're in this situation where if you line all the dominoes up, we have a situation where in the event of a large fire event, we're going to see the insurance industry that already is in a position where they're losing money, where they're in such a position where they're losing so much money, they're not willing to take on more risk because they're losing money on it. And remember, volume of a loss is a larger loss. So they're not taking on new business until they're able to find a way to make it profitable to be able to stay in business. And then you're going to potentially turn around and send them a bill for a large fire loss, which is exactly what we started out with the first domino trying to avoid paying for because they can't afford to do that. It's a tough situation. It's a scary situation. And one of the things that I get asked with 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 great frequency, actually, is, well, if the insurance companies aren't making money, how is that possible when the premiums keep going up? And the simple answer is, Insurance, when you collect a premium dollar today, that premium dollar has to be what's called earned. It has to be on the books. It has to be in the insurance carrier's possession, and they have to have it for a period of time before it's actually money to them because they have expenses, they have other claims, they have things where that money is already going out. 
Keep in mind also, currently in the state of California, we are one of the highest regulated states as far as the California Department of Insurance and consumer protections. And what that translates into, whereas in some states, an insurance carrier might be able to say, okay, in this particular area where there's a high amount of losses happening, we're going to either change the guidelines where their deductibles have to be higher or where the premium has to be higher or whatever the case may be and they make that change and then they're back to profitability, right? Because they've made the appropriate uh, they've made the appropriate changes to be able to continue. In California, anytime an insurance carrier wants to make a change or pivot into some other way, they have to go through a very long process that can take months or even years to have those changes implemented, not to mention sometimes they're simply rejected outright. So if you look at that as being the environment that the industry has worked in indefinitely, certainly since the 80s, then you'll be able to find and maybe appreciate the fact that the carriers have gotten to the place where they are so in the red, they are so unable to turn a profit based on where they are currently sitting right now, that they've gone to the extreme length of saying, I can't offer more coverage. Remember, an insurance company makes money, it's very easy, they sell insurance, and they collect premium, and they may make money based on the premium compared to their claims paid out and their investment income on your premium. It's pretty simple. So if an insurance company is choosing voluntarily not to offer coverage, that's bad. And it can only be for one reason, and that's because they're not able to do all of those things. They're not able to make profit. They're not able to keep themselves in the red. Now, when we come back, I wanna give you a little more color on that. What does that look like? What is that called? How do we know it's not just a big hoax? It's not just a big conspiracy to try and make people pay more money. Let's talk about that as soon as we come back. California's insurance market can be challenging, but Sussman Insurance Agency knows the way. Trusted for two generations in home, auto, and personal insurance. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Navigate with confidence. Did you know that there's a nonprofit organization that's trusted across the country and provides expert guidance on insurance matters free of charge? United Policyholders, a charitable organization with over 32 years of experience, is widely respected by courts, legislators, regulators, the media, and consumers nationwide for expertise in all aspects of insurance. If you want preparedness advice, disaster recovery information, guidance in purchasing insurance, or you simply want to be up to speed on the latest issues impacting the insurance marketplace, visit uphelp.org. Read an article on Bok Talk, browse our disaster help libraries, or consider our preparedness information. We don't take money from insurance companies, and we know what we're talking about. Visit us online at uphelp.org. That's U-P-H-E-L-P dot org. Hello, hello. All right. Just before the break, we were talking about the big conspiracy theory. This is where people are talking and saying, well, this is all artificially created. The insurance industry is, is doing this just to try and find a way to charge more money. I could do an entire show trying to show you the, the flaw in, in that logic. It's not even logic, the flaw in that argument altogether. However, let's just make it simple. You're trying, if, if you are subscribing to that concept that the insurance industry is in fact turning around and doing some coordinated effort between hundreds of private companies to find a way to charge more premium, I mean, truthfully, we should really just stop at that point because it's absurd to try and think something like that could be happening. You would also have to believe that there are some carriers willing to fall on their swords, go bankrupt, leave the industry altogether to try and, again, make that conspiracy happen. You might also be interested to know that there's really, really only one organization that is pushing that concept, that is pushing the, oh, it's a hoax, the insurance carriers just want to make more money, and I'm not going to call them out specifically, but they know who they are, and anytime you hear information from an organization that might be trying to specifically tell you about conspiracies, you might want to look under the hood and see who butters their bread, where are they getting their money from. It turns out that the organization that's pushing this conspiracy theory concept with the insurance industry makes tens of millions of dollars on the insurance industry writing insurance. And it's 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 crazy business. You you really 
I should probably do a separate show just about that. But I wanted you to understand that there that we have to talk about it because this is out there. People do think this on some level because they're hearing it. I've done multiple appearances on different networks and they inevitably will ask me straight out. They'll say, what do you say to people that claim this is a, you know, a set up by the insurance industry? And I always, I have to stop and take a deep breath because it's so silly and say, so you're saying that State Farm, Farmers, Allstate, AAA, Mercury, Hartford, Travelers, Safe, I mean, you could rattle off as many carriers as you want. There, there were hundreds of them writing business in California. They all got together and they said, Psst, hey guys, let's do this. Let's all stop making money and we'll force the insurance industry to change because they need insurance. Really? Yeah, no, that's not how it works. These are publicly traded companies in most cases. They have shareholders to answer to. This is not happening. This is not happening. This is the impact of on consumers is happening based on, in part, legislation that was passed 30 some odd years ago when the world was different. And I, I don't want to be that old guy saying, get off my lawn and things were better and easier back in the day and all of that fun stuff. But times were definitely different. There was a time when you literally could, as a, as a broker, I'll give you an example. Client would call and want to have an insurance quote, and we would have a full list of carriers that we could go to. And we would be able to check and see which coverage matched what that consumer was looking for. And then we would be able to check the prices based on the coverages. And we would be able to go through all these different tasks to be able to then go to the client and say, okay, this is the best option we believe based on cost, based on carrier, based on what it is you're looking for. That's the free market. And you would find dozens of companies that were begging to get business because they were able to be profitable and they wanted to grow. The fact that they're not growing now and the fact that they're refusing new business, even more so that they're actually non-renewing business, you can't make money by non-renewing a policy, right? You can't, doesn't work that way. What they're doing is they're trying to cut back on the losses that they see coming to be able to stay afloat. I'm not an insurance carrier defender, and I, I don't want you to get that impression. I am a consumer, just like everyone here. What I do know, because I work in the industry, is I understand the, in the intricacies of how the process works, of what carriers are doing, how they make money, how they don't make money, and why they make certain decisions that they do. Similarly, I'm on the ground. I'm boots on the ground talking with consumers and clients every single day for over 30 years. I know, 30 years for over 30 years, and we're talking about their avail about the coverage that they wanna have. So I can see, I've watched this slow burn over the last four years or so, where the carriers are saying, hmm, we're seeing large losses happening that we have not seen in the past. We need to account for that. And the industry wasn't, uh, the, the legislation and the current regulation didn't permit for it. Year after year after year after year. That's what put us in this position. There's something called a, a loss ratio, or in the business, they call it a combined loss ratio. It's if you take in $100 in premium at the, if, in, in one year, how much of that $100 do you have to pay out in claims and expenses? If it's $100, it means the carrier made no money. It's break even. They stayed afloat. If it's under $100, then they've made what's called an underwriting profit. Let's say it's $95. That means that for every $100 they collect, they're able to keep $5 and they invest it and they grow it and they do all those other things that they can do to make money. For the last, at least, and I, I could pull up the statistics, at least five, six, seven, eight, nine years, you will have seen insurance carriers paying out on every $100, anywhere from 110 to 150 in some cases percent of, of dollars on the $100. They are literally paying out 10%, 20%, 30% more than they're collecting. Now I'm not a math guy, but I'm pretty sure if you pay out more than you're collecting, at some point that's gotta stop, right? If, if we play the game of, let's play a game, you give me a dollar and I give you a dollar 20, you're gonna love that game. I'm not gonna love that game, and pretty soon, I'm not gonna have the money to do it. That's literally where we are right now. We're in a position where the carriers are not having enough funds to be able to pay potentially for claims that they have the current exposure on. That is one of the stated reasons that State Farm actually said straight out, they said, look, 
we're not in a position to keep all of these risks because we don't believe we have the financial stability to pay claims based on all of our exposure right now. And in part because, I'm sure they wouldn't say this straight out, or maybe they would, because of the environmental and the legislative and the regulatory environment, it's not permitting them to make some of the changes that reality has made us live in, which is, and we'll talk about this after the next break, why is it that all of a sudden, or over the period of years, the carriers are not collecting enough premium to be able to pay their, to potentially pay their claims? Now, someone else had asked me, they said, why, which of these 72,000, 73,000 policies that are being non-renewed from one company or 38,000 policies from another, what policies are those going to be? And my answer was simple. I said, well, let's think about it. If you're going to be non-renewing policies, do you think you're going to non-renew the lower risk or the higher risk policies? Of course, they're going to non-renew the higher risk policies, which of course are even more difficult to find replacement coverage for. So again, let's talk about this after the break. Let's talk about how we got here. How do we get to a place where the insurance industry, mind you, this is not just in one state, it's countrywide, is losing money when they write insurance. Let's talk about it right when we come right back. I'm sure many small business owners out there have been hearing a lot about tax advisory, but aren't quite sure what it is or how it can help. Let Semaphore guide you and help fulfill your tax advisory needs at SemaphoreHQ.com. A tax advisor is a part-time, on-demand financial expert who can help you with scaling and tracking your financials and making smart financial decisions. How do you know if you need tax advisory? The answer depends on your stage, size, and goals. Tax advisory can help you address these issues without the cost or commitment of hiring a full-time CFO. A tax advisor can work with you on a project basis, a retainer basis, or a hybrid basis, depending on your needs and budget. If you are interested in learning more about how tax advisory can help you scale your business, please contact Semaphore today at 720-766-8869 or check us out at semaphorehq.com. That's S-E-M-A-P-H-O-R-E-H-Q.com. Hello, hello, and we are back. All right, so we were talking before the break about why the insurance industry is where it is. And before I get into the details, I just wanna remind you that you can call in with your questions anytime, 559-656-0317. You can also send a question to questions at insurancehour.com. You can also find the show on all great stations in California, reaching over 30 million people. On top of that, if you miss us, you can catch the rest of the show or the beginning of the show that you might've missed on YouTube or as a podcast. So how do we get here? How do we get to a place where an insurance industry, an entire industry is losing money versus making money? This is a problem. I have to look, I have to start with the elephant in the room, which is climate change. And I know that's a buzz phrase. I didn't used to be able to say it without getting people rolling their eyes at me and getting upset. And it seems that people that didn't believe in climate change have now changed to, they, they believe in it, they just don't believe it the fault of what the people are doing. It's, they think it would just have happened either way. So at least we're all on the same page. We all agree that climate change is a thing. We are seeing the climate change. And based on that, we are seeing weather events that are unbelievable. We've seen wildfires in the last five years that we've never seen before. We've seen rainfall on the West Coast that we have never seen before. We've had tornado warnings. We've had tsunami warnings all over California that we've never had in the past. Forgetting California, we have storms that are happening in other parts of the country and weather events that have literally never happened before. This is something that we can't ignore. It's not the only reason, but it's a large driving force. It's what started us off on this path. And I, I hate the, to say it's the perfect storm because that just sounds horrible. It's a horrible pun. But it is in part a perfect storm because we have these unbelievable, unprecedented weather events happening that are causing the industry in general billions of dollars on top of it, we had record inflation. If you ask anybody right now, does anything cost less today than it did a few years ago? And everybody's very quick to say, oh my God, no, everything is so crazy expensive. Well, right. That's what the insurance carriers have to pay for when there's a claim, the stuff that we're saying is crazy expensive. So 
we would expect the premiums to reflect that. If they used to be able to spend $200, $300 a night for a hotel room while their home is being repaired, but now that hotel room is four or five, $600 a night, the insurance carrier has to pay that. So the premiums that we'll be paying to pay for those claims are going to be higher. It's just math. It's not political. So we have record inflation, and you've heard that. I hate repeating these phrases because they're frustrating and they're annoying and they're just these buzz phrases. Oh, it's inflation. Oh, it's weather. Oh, it's the conspiracy. And somehow that's exactly what I'm doing. But it's all of these things combined in, in their intricacies that have put us in this position where the insurance industry is losing money. We have the inflation issue. We have the fact that everything is costing so much money. We have labor. Have you ever noticed if you try to do work on your house, if you call around for a, a quote to get a bid, whether it be put on a new roof, change, your, change out your fence, maybe you wanna do a remodel, something strange happens that did not used to be the case, let's say 10 years ago. Anyone wanna guess what that is? I'll tell you, and I can tell you from personal experience, people don't call back. Contractors and people that are doing that type of work are so busy, they are literally just not bothering to call back. So guess what they're doing? They're charging a lot of money. The demand is so high, so high, that they're, that they're not even able to keep up with that demand. So you'll call and try and get work done on your house and you can't even get a return phone call. And the people who do, are the, the lucky ones, are paying a lot more than they used to because now they're in a position where they don't have a lot of options. There's not as many people doing this type of work and doing this type of construction because there is a labor shortage and because there were shortages in lumber and parts and electronics. And you know, it's so annoying to hear that because that's pandemic talk. The bizarre thing is this is still happening. This is happening as we sit here today. There is still a shortage of people to do that type of labor and that type of work. Believe it or not, there is still an issue getting parts. I can tell you, firsthand, my wife's vehicle needs a part. It's a brand new 2023 vehicle and it needs a part. And the dealership, I'm not gonna even, I'm not gonna call out the brand of the car. I'm sure it's not the only one. They're telling us on this brand new car we had for less than a month, the part they need, it's a computer module, by the way, it's not available. Okay, when, when you have to order it, when is it going to come in? Oh, we're not sure. Come again? Yeah, we don't know when that part's going to come in. All of the parts that we're trying to get are back, back ordered, backlogged. They're not being made. Uh, so the brand new car can't get the part to make it work? Pretty much. What do you think that does when there's a claim? If this, if this vehicle of ours, if my wife's vehicle were in an accident and needed a part, can you imagine how much the insurance carriers were, would have to pay for me to be able to be out of a car and have to wait for that part. Can you imagine what it would cost as the clock keeps ticking? And what do you think they're going to charge for that part? Do you think it's going to be inexpensive? Or do you think the dealership and the manufacturer are going to say, well, they need it and they've waited four months for it. We can charge them pretty much whatever we want. That's impacting our insurance rates because that is going into the expenses and the claim exposure that the insurance carriers have. This is a real thing. And again, for me, it's it's so frustrating because I feel, I thought we sort of left this behind already. This was behind us, but apparently not. This is still happening. So we have weather events. We have inflation. We have parts. We have labor. We have something that's called social inflation, which is a general term that describes people's general um, propensity to file a claim or not. And believe it or not, it ebbs and flows. It just depends. There are times when people are prosperous and they're less likely to file claims. It just happens. And there are times when money is tight and they are more likely to file claims. That's it's just a factor that has to be put into the, into the equation. And for reasons that are beyond the scope of this show, that number is very high right now. People are more likely to put in claims than they had been five years ago, 10 years ago. And by a large margin, not, a, not placing blame, not placing fault. And I know a lot of people say, well, I have coverage, I should put in the claim. Totally fine, and you can. The combined effect of that as a cultural shift to more claims coming in does have an impact on insurance premiums, and that affects everybody. So what about the argument that, well, they're an insurance company, 
That's what they do. Let's talk about that when we come back from the break because insurance carriers are in the business of collecting premium and paying claims. So what is with this concept of why are they raising the premium because they're paying the claims? I want to explain what that's all about so you understand it. We'll be right back and we'll cover that. In today's uncertain times, navigating the California insurance marketplace can feel like a journey through uncharted waters. That's where Sussman Insurance Agency steps in, guiding you with the wisdom of experience and the care of family. We at Sussman Insurance Agency understand the complexities of finding the right coverage in these challenging times. With decades of expertise and a heritage spanning two generations, we're more than just insurance agents. We are your trusted advisors, your navigators in the sea of insurance options. Treating our clients like family isn't just a phrase, it's our commitment. We listen, we understand, and we provide solutions tailored to your unique needs. Why? Because to us, you're a part of the Sussman family. Don't let the tides of uncertainty sway you. Anchor your trust in Sussman Insurance Agency. Call us today at 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Have specific questions? Drop us an email at sales at sussmaninsurance.com. At Sussman Insurance Agency, we're not just in the business of policies. We're in the business of peace of mind. Sussman Insurance Agency, navigating your insurance life together. Hello, hello, welcome back. And I wanted to talk to you more about this concept of, but what about? The but what about? But what about the insurance carriers? Why are they doing this? Why is this happening? Remember, I am Carl Sussman, host of Insurance Hour, and I'm here taking your questions. Feel free to call in now at 559-656-0317. You can also send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right away, you could also dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and that should connect you with an agent right away. If you missed part of this show, you want to get caught up, you can find it as a podcast. You can also find it on YouTube and some of these great stations that were syndicated on, I'm sure play the show more than once. So just keep an ear open and you will be able to jump back in and get caught up. This is important stuff. So why is it that the insurance carriers are charging us more money and claiming they're losing money at the same time. This is math, right? And again, not complicated, but it's outside of the scope of this show for me to get into the specific numbers. But let me explain the concept, the concept. The concept of insurance has to do with probability, the probability of a loss. It's pooling also, that's what most people think. Oh, it's just about pooling. Everyone puts money in and then there's enough money for the few people that have claims. That's part of it. But a large part of it also has to do with predictability. It's being able to find out and predict what type of claims are expected, right? What is the likelihood of a claim? What is the probability of a claim? What we're seeing now is these models that have been being used in the past were what were called backward facing models. They would look on average about 10 years in the past and they would say, okay, in the last 10 years, this is what we experienced. These are the losses we experienced. This is the claims cost that we experienced. This is how we'll deal with the premium based on that expectation. Now what's happened is the future looks nothing like the past for reasons that we discussed just before the break. It looks nothing like the past. So the industry is in a, pl- in a position where they need to, number one, adjust for today to be able to have sufficient premium and to have sufficient underwriting options to be able to allow people affordable coverage. And at the same time, instead of looking at the, ba- at the past, instead of looking at the previous 10 years and saying, this is what it looked like, they need to start looking at the future. Fortunately, insurance carriers are very good, well, some of them, are very good at taking a lot of data and predictive models and computer modeling, stuff that would blow all of our minds, and come up with what the expectations are. And it makes sense. They've been doing that with the life insurance industry forever, right? When you buy a life insurance policy, what happens? Well, they look at your age, they ask if you smoke, they ask you about health questions, they get all this information, and based on big numbers and big data, they're able to say, hmm, based on all of these factors, we think this person is going to live till age, insert number here. It's actually kind of creepy. And guess what? They're right. They're usually very close to right. Of course, barring accidents and things like that. However, the concept of using data we have now to predict the future is not a new concept. The problem is, in states like California, There are regulations that prohibit the insurance industry from doing that. They're only allowed to look backwards. 
This was okay, historically. It might not have been something the insurance carriers loved. However, it worked. It, it, things were homogenous enough. Things were similar enough today as they were yesterday and the day before. They were able to make it work. However, now, because there are such drastic changes to everything that's going on around us, like we talked about before the break, people are in a, the carriers are in a position where they must look forward because pricing and underwriting based on the past does not work because yesterday's events are not reflective of the, of the days that we're having today or in the future. This is something that is being tackled in the state of California by the Sustainable Insurance Strategy, which is being put out by the California Department of Insurance and Ricardo Lara. It recognizes this issue and it's saying, okay, I get it. Things are different now than they were last year, last two years, last three years, last four years. And we don't know what it's going to be in the future. If you have models, show us how these models work and we'll let you work based on those. So fortunately, this aspect that's holding the industry back from being able to properly price and underwrite risks is going to be something, if all things continue to along the same path, that will be coming to fruition. So the good news is there is light at the end of the tunnel. Things are going to get better because some of these problems, like the forward-looking concept that we've just talked about, are going to be, if everything continues again along this path, they are going to be permitted. What that means is an insurance carrier will have more flexibility to say to you, okay, you live in this area. The price is going to be X, Y, Z. But we also know, based on our modeling, that if you had a more fire-resistive roof, then we could lower your premium by this percentage. And by the way, if you could clear some of the vegetation around your house, our models are telling us that that would be a significant factor in preventing a loss to your house. So this, this forward-looking modeling is not just about, let's find a way to predict the future and charge a premium for it. It's much more granular than that. It's much more specific than that. It allows the industry to be able to look specifically on a house by house basis and say what the price might be, what the risk profile looks like, and most importantly, to be able to say what consumers can do to lower their risk factor, to lower their exposure to loss, to lower their premium. I know it sounds crazy to think that there are regulations that are on the books right now that prevent a carrier from offering a discount but it's true. Remember we talked earlier about the process to go through of making changes and how long it can take? That's not an exaggeration. And that's not simply, well, if a carrier wants to raise a rate, it takes a long time. No, it's for any type of a change, whether it be a discount, a premium increase, an underwriting guideline change, you name it. There's, a, there's a, an infamous one, I almost said famous. There's an infamous carrier. And again, I, I don't like to call carriers out by name, but there's a carrier that filed for a discount change. It was going to change the percentage that someone would receive by having their home insurance and their auto insurance with that carrier. And that particular request went back and forth with the Department of Insurance and the carrier for over 300 days. 300 days. That's a long time. Now, during all that time, that wasn't in the change was not implemented. So by the time it was approved, and it went through, it no longer made sense. So it's this being behind the eight ball mentality that the carriers have been in because they're not able to be nimble and to make changes in a timely manner to affect the reality of, of what's going on. Just imagine if somebody said, I need you to predict something that's going to happen in five seconds. You could have whatever likelihood of that being the case. But now if I said, I need you to predict what's going to happen in 30 days, uh, that might be a little more difficult for you. If I said six months or a year, forget about it, or it's going to be a lot less likely to happen. So we're going to be in a position soon where the industry is able to utilize these tools to predict things in the future and not just what's happening today or what's happened yesterday. We'll talk a little bit more about that right after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. 
My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the windowtothemagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Master the California insurance marketplace with Sussman Insurance Agency. Two generations of insight make us your ideal ally. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com for information on your insurance policies now. Hello, hello. All right. We are in our final segment, and I want to be sure that I make some points crystal clear. But before I do, I want to remind you that if you missed any parts of this show, you can go back and catch it as a podcast. You can go back and catch it on YouTube. This is important stuff. This is this is really a clear the air sort of show today because a lot of information that I'm providing is information that just isn't out in the general conversation like it should be. So you can check us out on iHeart. You can check us out as any podcast you might find online. You can check us out on YouTube. You'll, you'll find us. And again, you'll always be able to find us on the station you're listening to right now. And I thank you to all of our wonderful partners that were syndicated on all across the state of California. Thank you so much. Okay, we need to understand as a society in general that fundamentally insurance is going to be different going forward than it was in the past. Yes, that means price. Yes, that means underwriting. Yes, that means guidelines. Yes, that means when you use your policy. Let me tell you a quick story. With health insurance, it used to work like this. If you got hurt and ended up in the hospital, you would have a policy that would pay for your insurance, that would pay for your medical bills, excuse me. Then someone said, let's be competitive. Let's also pay if they go to the doctor. Okay. And then we started having options for hospital plans and plans to go to the doctor. Pretty cool. Competition's a good thing, right? When lots of companies are trying to get your business, they will innovate and they'll come up with new ways to try and entice you. Then another carrier might have come in and said, you know what, we're gonna, let's also pay for prescriptions. So we'll pay for the hospital, we'll pay for the doctor, we'll pay for the prescription, we'll pay for all that stuff. And this started happening year after year. And what we finally got to is a position where health insurance is so convoluted. Our expectation is that we can go to a doctor that we want, pay a copay, and just have everything else handled. How did we get there from the, we're gonna pay only when you're in the hospital to, I can go to any doctor I want, get whatever prescription I want, and I just wanna pay $5 or $10 to do it. That's the general expectation. It might not be yours personally, but that is the consumer attitude in general toward health insurance. And it's one of the reasons that the health insurance market is so difficult. You hear about the Affordable Care Act and you hear about pricing and you hear about underwriting and pre-existing conditions. All of these things are a product of the concept that we've gotten to a place where we our expectations are not in line with the reality of what it will cost to get that, right? When you had the simple choice, pick a hospital plan or pick a plan that's hospital and doctor, your choice, and it could be priced, great. But now that everything, including the kitchen sink, has been thrown in, health insurance has become very difficult. Because again, same reason, the carriers are not able to find a way to make money. Take one simple thing. You buy a health insurance policy, and I don't wanna go off on this tangent, but apparently I am now. You buy a health insurance policy, and the next week, you decide the doctor says you need an antibiotic. That antibiotic might cost the insurance carrier your entire year's premium. Easily, happens all the time. What about going to the doctor after that? What about if you end up in the hospital? All of that literally is a loss to the health insurance carrier. So this is one of the reasons that our health insurance premiums are so out of line with what we think they should be. It's because they weren't designed to do what it is that they're doing. All right, sorry about that. I didn't mean to go off on the health insurance tangent. We could do another show all about health insurance. 
the shift in the, the concept of insurance is what's really important. I started asking people a while ago, I said, if you had your choice between not having a loss or having a covered loss, what would you prefer? So I'll ask you, which would you prefer, a covered loss or just not to have a loss? Believe it or not, most people would say a covered loss. And it shocked me because in my mind, no loss is always better, right? I mean, no loss means you have had no loss. <laughs> Nothing bad has happened. Loss is bad. And when I would ask people, well, why, why would you prefer a covered loss? And their answer was actually a little bit surprising. They said, well, I've been paying money in for my insurance all this time, so let them pay some of it back. And I stopped and I thought, okay, I understand that thinking. But if that's the rationale, if that's the, the general thought process that most people are under, it explains why so many more claims are being put in than they were historically. Insurance is not a savings account. It's not where you put money and you expect to get it back. If you are a very, very fortunate person, you will do nothing except pay insurance premiums your entire life and never get a penny back. And you will be the happiest, luckiest person in the world because that means you have had what? No claims, which means no loss. That's a good thing. You're not supposed to buy a policy with the expectation that you're going to get money back for the sake of getting money back. You should be buying a policy because in the event something bad happens, I keep saying it like a loss, right? Then you'll have a safety net. Then you'll have a company that can step in and say, okay, we're going to help you and cover this financial loss that you've had. But until people sort of have that shift of mentality where they can say, all right, I don't want a loss to get my money back. That's a heck of a price to pay, right? Look about, think about life insurance. If you had a life insurance policy on a loved one and you paid for it for 30 years, would you be sitting there saying, I want them to die because I want to get that money back that I paid off over 30 years? I would hope not. But that's the same thinking. That's the same mentality. The only difference is people are talking about their roofs. They'd rather say, okay, wait, roof or roof? Roofs, roofs, roofs. Let me know which way it is. Now I've, I've lost myself if it's roofs or roofs. But anyway, that's the mentality that we have to change. We have to understand that insurance is there as a safety net, not a savings account. It's there to put in when there's something that's really bad that happens, not something that's inconvenient that happens. And you think you might be able to get a couple of bucks back on the money that you've quote unquote put in all of this time. That is having a large impact on the premiums that we're paying for all of us. That's having an impact on the premium that we're all paying. And it's one of the contributing factors that we're seeing that's keeping our insurance prices going up, up, up. And nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. But we can't have our cake and eat it too, right? We can't have a system where we put in every single claim, even claims that we could potentially just handle on our own and then not have our premium ever change. If there are more claims, there are higher premiums. That's simply math, right? That's just the way it works. So with that, I hope you, you picked up a lot, of, a lot of good information from this. Again, I'm happy to answer questions. Please always keep calling in at 559-656-0317. Send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. You can hit pound 250, use keyword insurance anytime, and I, you'll get right through to an agent. And remember, insurance is there to help. And the more you understand it, the more you can utilize it, and the more your expectations are in line with the reality of what insurance policies can do the happier you will be overall. Again, I'm Carl Sussman. You've been listening to Insurance Hour, and I will talk with you again soon. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 6560317 educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time this is insurance hour the show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa